to just download an After Effects and it's overwhelming, it looks intimidating, you're stressed and you wanna cry. Totally understandable. The first time I was switching to After Effects, it was just so overwhelming. In fact, going from Video Star to After Effects, I downloaded and re-downloaded After Effects so many times before it finally stuck with me. I'm not even being dramatic, like it took me some time. So if you are switching programs or applications and you want to move to after effects this is the video for you so for this part it'll just be getting familiar with after effects that's what we'll call it and then part two and so on and so forth will be like transitions plugins etc i don't want to waste your time so let's start first we're going to take a little bit of a tour because i understand that just how after effects is formatted and like organized it can look very intimidating especially if you're moving from phone editing to computer. I'm going to be using the word composition a lot in this video and it's important that you understand exactly what a composition is. So pretty much by definition, a composition is a creative piece of work. So a poem, a song, a drawing, um, an edit. And so when I say composition, we're mainly really referring to your edit or components of the edit. Over here is normally where your composition will be shown. But since we haven't imported anything yet and haven't made a format for the composition, you see this, but we'll get there. And over here we have a lot of tabs, but the main ones you'll be paying attention to if you're just doing basic editing like Instagram or TikTok, you wanna pay attention to effects and presets. Although yours may not look like this if you don't have any plugins downloaded, then you wanna pay attention to align. This is where you can align certain things. So if your scenes are like, all over the place you can just align it i'll show you later character is just for text paragraph is also for text and occasionally we we'll use tracker tracker you don't need to know about tracker right now don't worry about it over here is where when you import things for your composition they'll show up here so that you can see everything you've imported so scenes pngs pictures they'll all show up here and that's for the project tab. If we switch over to the effects tab, we will see the effects that you've used. So exposure, brightness and contrast, plugins, etc. Down here is where is where it all happens. Um, this is where we do the transitions and whatnot. So let's start with new composition. So once we open this up, there's a lot going on. You can name your composition. Let's name it ENFJ, because that's my personality type. What you want to pay attention to in here is the width the height which is basically how your edit is gonna look so the format if it's gonna be square if it's gonna be rectangle and then frame rate okay so frame rate also known as fps is pretty much just how i actually don't know frame rate is just how your video is gonna be displayed so what editors mainly use is 23.976 or 30 fps that's the main ones we use now there's a style where you can do 60 fps and it makes it way smoother but I would not start out at 60 FPS. It's stressful, it's gonna make you wanna cry even more, and it lags depending on the type of computer you have. So I like to stick between 23 and 30. Keep the background black. So duration obviously is where you can, you know, if you wanna make the edit, 25 seconds, 35 seconds, you know, I'm gonna keep it at five. For this edit, I'm gonna do 1080 by 1080. You've made a square so proud of you and um, it only gets worse from here so let's go to importing clips now you have to download clips onto your computer now people have been asking like how do you import clips and guys it's like the easiest thing in the world it's probably the easiest part about editing all you have to do is just find the video of your scene pack or clip and drag it into the composition let's start off with some basics you're gonna push s on your keyboard and it's gonna drop down scale and scale is how you want to zoom in and zoom out into things so when you do transitions like zoom in and zoom out transitions you would use scale i'm gonna zoom in, in just a little bit even though there's no borders but i just want to make sure and then click p and this is position so how we can move the clip from up and down or left to right and so although we're not doing a transition right now i'm going to right click position and do separate dimensions so that you can just see if you've done like basic algebra you probably already know like what this is x and y but if you haven't x position is what's going to make your clip go from side to side so i'm going to move harry to the to the frame here and then y position so you can go up and down and so if you ever want to reset something like maybe you moved it all the way up here all you have to do is just right click 
and you reset and it goes back to its original position. Once you import scenes, it's very important to do something called pre-compose. And so I see a lot of people asking like, what is pre-composing? The best thing I can compare it to is layering. So in Video Star, you have multi-layer and you can do about seven layers, I think. You can't put a lot of things on one layer and that's the same for After Effects. The best I can explain pre-composing is that you're just taking everything about the clip and you're making like a tiny package so that you can do the next thing. So every time you import a scene, you want to pre-compose. It's very important. So we have a lot of options, but I'm not even going to explain them all. Just click move all attributes into the new composition. So just make sure you have this and this selected. Always make sure you have these two selected unless some other tutorial account tells you not to. You're probably wondering like, why are my clips so blurry? It's because you might have the resolution on quarter. The reason why we keep the resolution at quarter when we're editing is because if we have it on full, which is basically what the edit looks like, like actually looks like when you render it, it will pretty much overstimulate your computer and it'll freak out. So keep it on quarter, edit on quarter, unless you have a good PC that can handle it on half. So now I want to leave you with keyframes. Um, we're not going to do a transition today or anything. I just want to introduce you to the concept of keyframes. So let's look up exposure for some demonstration. And to add effects to your clip, you can just double click or you can actually drag it to your composition. But I already double clicked. So when you see a stopwatch looking symbol in After Effects, 99% of the time it's indicating keyframes. We have a beginning keyframe and we have an end keyframe. For my beginning keyframe, which is always going to be the first keyframe, I'm going to put the exposure at 1.5. As you can see, the clip is lighter, um, but I want it to go darker towards the end of the clip. So I'm going to mark my keyframe by clicking the stopwatch and then I'm going to go a few keyframes over. And for my end keyframe, it's going to be zero. Click you on your keyboard so you can actually see the keyframes. See, so this is my beginning keyframe. 1.50 my end keyframe that's going to be zero but that's pretty much how you can do all transitions it's always going to be a beginning and end keyframe anyway so that's all the important stuff i think so it's very important that you take baby steps and get familiar don't be scared of it i feel like when i started i was scared of after effects um don't do that always ask for help i was that person who was embarrassed to ask for help when i was learning after effects don't be that girl or guy 